Well, they've come to our shores in the hopes of a better life, but for many foreign workers, navigating the corridors of our economy often means placing their lives at risk. Amnesty International is calling out the authorities for failing to act on vigilante groups, intimidating foreign shop owners. The NGO says police are sending a message that it's acceptable for these acts to continue and that this violates basic human rights of safety, security, dignity and life. We cross now to Genevieve Quintal, who is with Amnesty International. Genevieve, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's a very difficult subject because if you haven't lived in abject poverty such as you and I um, we aren't all scratching for the same resources and fighting over the same resources at the same time it sends cold shivers down my spine when I hear about these Operation Dadoulas and Alex Dadoula uh, because it's only a matter of time before foreign nationals are absolutely terrified and forced to flee, if not with the threat of violence. Absolutely, Annika. And this is why we're saying that authorities need to take action against these groups. It's all good and well to be on the ground where there are clashes and trying to keep peace and order. But these operations of going around try, telling um, foreign-owned shop owners and vendors that they have to close down their shop. We saw the footage, people tearing down their tents, folding up their tables. These operations are illegal. It's not up to these vigilante groups to go around and firstly demand to see if someone is an illegal migrant or not and to close down their shop. And so police need to start taking action against these groups who do that because it's not, they do not have the right to do that. And if they believe that someone is there illegally, if they believe someone's committing a crime, go to the police. It is not your job to do that. And because police are not taking action from the beginning, we see this kind of, these kind of operations continue because there's no consequences for it. There also seems to be this, uh, the sense that an injured foreign national, the life of an injured foreign national, of a foreign national is not as valuable uh, as that of a South African. And that's extremely disturbing. But for me, the problem is not just the police standing by, it's our leadership in this country where uh, Julius Malema, um, other political parties are, are marching up uh, with impunity to foreign nationals and, uh, and restaurants and demanding lists of uh, people's, uh, you know, cards that, that they have for asylum seekers, etc. Surely it's, it's government's job to squash this as right now. Absolutely. And we have previously said as well, we've called on leaders, political leaders, government officials to be very careful with their words because their words do fuel these xenophobic incidences. And you do, you need, we need leadership now. We need government on the ground saying enough is enough. And part of that is police taking action. There need to be consequences for these acts, these illegal operations. Because like we said, and, and you said it earlier, by not taking action against people who, who are operating illegally this way in terms of getting people to shut down their shops, you're letting them think that is, it is acceptable and it's not. It's against the law. And you are violating people's rights. Our constitution allows for the rights of everyone in this country, no matter who you are. And we need to uphold those rights. And we need to hold government accountable and the police that they also uphold those rights of everyone in South Africa, no matter who they, they are and no matter what their status is. Genevieve, are you getting a sense that the situation is moving towards a 2008 and 2015 situation? Do you think things are ratcheting up? Are you on alert? We are definitely on alert. Uh, we keep this, we're keeping our eye on, on every incident that happens. You know, the past few weeks, we, we, we see these flare-ups, and, and we see them often, these up and down flare-ups, and it is very concerning. But again, this is why we keep saying, and we keep highlighting, how past acts of violence, including the killing of foreign nationals during xenophobic violence, which we saw as far back as 2008, have gone unpunished. And this leads to this entrenched culture of impunity. So yes, we, we are on high alert, we're keeping an eye, and we will continue to put pressure on the government and authorities to make sure that they deal with this adequately. We cannot keep quiet about this. We do not want to repeat of what we've seen in the past in this country. When you do speak to government, what kind of response do you get? Because the feeling I get is that 
if they speak out uh, against the abuse and attacks on foreign nationals and xenophobia in general, uh, they will be unpopular with the vote. Absolutely. Look, we don't we don't comment on politics, and yes, it, it is a a big issue, especially when you're coming up to election years. But if you are a government official, you are bound by the laws and constitution of this country. No matter what your personal opinion is, you need to stick to those laws. So we will, like I said, we will continue to put pressure on government. We will continue to hold them to account for their actions, their words. And we will continue to push that, that things actually get better in terms of this. Because, like I've said, we cannot keep quiet. And South Africans should not keep people in South Africa should not keep quiet. All right. Thank you so much. That was Amnesty International's Genevieve Quintal.